Welcome to week 12 of the Pokeballs podcast. I am one of your hosts, Lee, and I'm joined as always by our ever wonderful Scott. How are you doing, mate? Good. A bit tired. As we said, yeah. I've, had, I've had a long, long day this week. Well, today, specifically a long day. Uh, but, you know, feeling quite mellow today nice or, mellow. or right now. So, you know, it could be. We nice chill pod. I'm feeling the vibe. Nice chill vibes for this podcast. So it's going to be good. It's going to be good tonight. And um, just so everyone's aware, we are pre-recording this post uh, Wednesday. We're recording this actually on Friday night. I'm actually away next week, so it was the only time we could really fit in some time to record it. So there will be news next week, I'm sure, of it with new terrorists and things like that. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but if we are a little bit behind on things, then that explains it. But this episode today, we've got some goodies to go over. So make sure you stay till the end and let us know what you think of the podcast um, when it's when it's all done. When it's all done. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, you. Sorry, we hadn't even discussed if we were mentioning when we were recording it. I just feel it's probably quite relevant because no, it's a good idea. Some good news on Monday, so fingers I'm crossed. Just kind of fingers crossed. Pre- preempting that for our viewers, mate. No, no, that is that is good. Uh, and our guess, listeners, and yeah. yeah, our listeners, excellent. Right, so I think we should just hop straight into it. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to cover the news first, and then we've got an in- interesting topic for discussion. So stay tuned. Um, but diving straight into it, obviously, um, good news this week. Um, you know, we've got. We had the announcement of the Chestnut and the Iron Treads and Great Tusk Terror Raids coming back. Yes. Which is excellent because obviously we had no news from Pokemon for a long time in regards to what was actually happening. Um, but finally they were just like, yep, they're all coming on the same day. Basically what we said. Um, so the it's happening this weekend, right? So they're all happening again this weekend. The Chestnut one, the Great Tusk and the Iron Treads event. Uh- yeah, so it'll be Thursday, well, Thursday evening, like midnight, Friday, well, 1 p.m. UTC plus 1, so uh, Friday morning, very early Friday morning for us in the UK, and uh, that will be going live, and it, like Scott mentioned, it'll be the returning second phase of that Chestnut 7-star Terror Raid event, and then it will be uh, the Great Tusks and the Iron Treads Paradox Pokemon Spotlight Terror Raid event that was the main reason why the events got cancelled and we didn't have any terror raids for a while so that'll be kicking off on the 16th and we'll be running over to the 18th the nice thing is off the back of it pokemon came out and they said that the issues that would be causing the crashes and well they didn't say the crashes they just said the issues that they had with the raid have now been resolved so uh, that problem going forward is really good news for us because it means they probably looked at all of the paradox pokemon probably the hisuian pokemon like i expect we're gonna get so we shouldn't get any of these problems happening touch wood in future with terror raids and they are returning which is which is really nice do you want to just bring your mic just a little bit just a little bit closer towards you there we go mate excellent that's That's good yes cool right so no that's fine i did tell you to move it away a little bit um, excellent. So that's good because, as we've mentioned, fingers crossed, this should hopefully mean that the ball should, should start rolling now with all of the stuff that they we think they have planned behind doors. So hopefully we'll start getting more news with the DLC soon and a, a Delphox yeah. Terror Raid and we'll get the end of this, our, our theory of the Terror Raids. Maybe we'll get rid yeah, of Boom and Delphox and then we, we can see <laughs> what happens because obviously yeah. as Pokemon Home is now out, uh, the terror raids um, could potentially be a lot easier. It does depend on, as we mentioned briefly before the podcast, we had a quick discussion about how much easier they are with the Pokemon Home um, editions. However, um, as Lee rightly pointed out, um, they do help in some cases, obviously, because some of the Pokemon that have been mm. brought into the game are very overpowered. Uh, but you know, you still need to get the matchups correct for for it for it to be effective. So it'll be yeah. interesting to I see if they start that- interesting at it. If they start adding, yeah. sorry, harder raids after we get the Delphox and the Ridaboon one. Yeah, like I was mentioning to you, though, I think it's probably worth noting on the pod just to say that um, we have got a lot of legendary Pokemon in now from Pokemon Home, and they are very strong. Um, but specifically when you're like looking for things to beat 
D7 star terror raid Pokemon. They're very strong raids. So they might be able to beat six star terror raids pretty easy, but like seven star is like a level above six star raids. And a lot of the legendary Pokemon, although they can take hits, they can tank hits and they can dish out big damage. The problems that a lot of the big legendaries like Groudon, Kyogre, even Mewtwo, they and, and Rayquaza will put Rayquaza in there. They don't have ways to lower the defense on the the terror raid bosses, the target Pokemon. And I think for a lot of the seven star raids, you really need the combination to get through them quickly, to farm them quickly. The key is to have that combination of being able to reduce the defense stats on the target Pokemon. And as well as that, you need a way to boost your own uh, attacking stats. So you can kind of like stack everything up and then really hammer them and get that big damage off. Because they've got a 30 times multiplier on their HP set at level 100, which is absolutely ridiculous. So you're looking at like mid, like... 8,500 to like 9,000 HP stats for a lot of these Pokemon. Like Rillaboom is going to be over 9,000 HP stats. So to be able to beat them in the time that you've got as well with all of the other things going on, sometimes the legendaries don't fit the kind of criteria that you need to beat them. Whereas a lot of the Pokemon, the other Pokemon do have access to kind of the tools that you need to beat Seven Star Raids. So as much as I do think some of the new Pokemon might be useful going forward in Terror Raids, I still think the reliance is going to be like quite heavily on the kind of cohort of Pokemon that we've already got in Scarlet and Violet. So I don't see it changing too much. Although some of the Pokemon that we do have access to now will definitely make a big splash when the time is right, of course. I do think it's going to be the Delphox for the next one. That got leaked on the Spanish uh, Pokemon Hall map. It was on the calendar as Delphox. Fairy-type Delphox is the next raid after the Chestnut. So I fully expect that to get announced on the 19th when that event finishes. So, like, uh, next week. Next week. And we can talk about then that on the pod when uh, if we're right or if we're wrong. But... Uh, there's a bunch of things I can talk about with the Terror Raids, but we'll probably leave that for another time once we know the Delphox and what the subsequent Pokemon after that is. Sorry, Scott, I've just went on for like a million, no, million no. hours, it feels. I feel like uh, I've talked like for minutes and minutes and hours, so I apologize, you, mate. No, you just summarized it all really well, I think, basically. I don't think Thanks. there's much really to say until we, like, obviously, like we said, unfortunately, we're not recording this on Monday, which is when we normally do. So we'll have to wait and see next week when we record the podcast for next for the following week's episode, how right we were. So. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a little bit of time Excellent. to find out if we're right or not. But yeah, that is a Terror Raid. All good news for all of Scarlet and Violet players. Cool. Right. So moving on, we have, yeah. um, as we mentioned in last week's episode, mm -hmm. Powder Evolved was coming up. And um, it is out now. Um, Brilliant. I can't see anything that you're sharing with me, by the way, mate. Can you not? Nah, I've just got your... Um, I've literally just got your um, your icon image on Discord. Have you clicked on, have you, have you clicked on it? Yeah. Oh, my stream is paused. Yeah. Why is it stream? Why is it paused? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting anything. I don't know, I don't know. Quick. Sorry, technical difficulties on the pod. Apologize. 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 But uh, getting on, while Scott fixes that, I'm going to just throw this out there. I fully expect the next Terror Raid to be Delphox. After that, I think it'll be Rillaboom. And after that, I think we're going to start to get the Hisuian Pokemon in the Terror Raids because we've got Regulation D starting in July. And Pokemon are going to have to supply players with Pokemon that are going to be usable in this new regulation. Right, there you go. Um, and I think if, you know, uh, it's the same, mate. It's exactly the same. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's not, it's not working, mate. Stream paused. Why is so, it paused? Yeah, I think to allow all the players an even playing field, which they have to do, really, with a new regulation where they're introducing kind of exclusive Pokemon, they have to have a way to facilitate those to the players. So on my mind, I think July, August, September will be a lot of Spotlight Terror Raids for the Hisuian Pokemon, which is quite exciting. So they might not be seven-star Terror Raid Pokemon because I don't think well, that... they're going to have a role to play with the DLCs, but I do think that we're going to get them. Now, mate, it's still showing up just as your... Oh. It's just your icon, basically. It yeah, it's... every every time. But now... I think you need to share uh, Ninja with me, mate. 
I'm not sure. I'm, I'm trying to sh share with you OBS. You know, yeah, I... uh, you know what? You know what? I have. You. I'm going to have to disappear, just while I show you some stuff. Okay. I do apologize, guys. This is. This, we should not be doing this on the podcast. However, it is happening. Basically, how day revolved is dropped. This I is... still can't see anything. By the oh, way. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Okay. This is not working. Okay, well. we'll leave it. We'll just leave it. We'll have to leave it for now. You just, just send me the link to just... what you're looking at, and then I can have a look, yeah. and I'll scroll through it, mate. You, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to just use your imagination. You know. Okay, I'll don't... use my imagination. I don't know why it's not working, but okay. Anyway, anyway, apologies for anyone YouTube listening. YouTube video. Anyone listening, but um, Pader Revolved's come out. YouTube have done the little Pokemon have done the little 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 cheeky YouTube video. Um, teasing the set, obviously it's uh, based around the box size, based around the Paldean starters. We got the Meow Scarada, Quavo, um, not Quavo, Fucoco, yeah, all all the goodies. Skeledurge, Skeledurge looks sick. Yeah, and obviously we have the Ruin Pokemon, also a big part of this set as well. Ah, uh, they look epic, don't they? In this, they look very it's a nice cool. little trailer as well. They That's always, a nice little trailer for it. They always do a good job of like making yeah. them, um, making it look good. Um, so yeah, that's out now. Um, this is obviously this is uh, on. So the... for our listeners, just a kind of quick overview. If you can't see the video, it's basically just showing the fully evolved forms of the starter Pokemon, um, which they haven't really done in any official capacity before now. And then it goes in to show the, the room Pokemon. You've got um, Shimpao and you have Ting Lu as well. They're the two Pokemon that they kind of feature uh, facing off against the fully evolved Paldea Pokemon, which is pretty cool. And I'm just having a look through the special arts of this set now, mate, and they look absolutely amazing. So I think this set is going to be very exciting for a lot of fans out there. The special arts, full art cards are amazing you've got the gold cards as well which are the room pokemon well only two of the room pokemon so you've got uh shen pao and ting lu the other two are not in this set which is surprising so they're going to keep them for later on mm. no yeah. it, it's good i mean pokemon always seems to knock out of the park with the um, with the sets um we have i think looked at quite a few of them and previous episodes so um yeah, but there's an Annihilate full art card, and it looks amazing. It, it does so look good. very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still talking about the TCG, obviously we have the very eagerly awaited uh, 151 set coming out soon. Obviously that is coming out in Japan. The Japanese set, you can pre-order at the moment, if you can find it anywhere. Um, but it's you know, meant to be coming out soon. Um, they uh, the other day they announced uh, the release for it, the UK set. Um, and as Lee guessed correctly, it's going to be a holiday set, so you won't be able to get a booster box, but you will be able to pick yourselves up uh, an ETB, and uh, they're going to do an ultra premium collector's box as well, along with probably other themed tins and stuff like that. Oh, um, it's going to be so hard to get a hold of the ultra premium collection but, box for it. But oh, you can't see this now. I've just realised this is jarring. Um, so I'll, I'm going to send you the link in. So there's new artwork. They keep obviously teasing artwork. So if you don't want any spoilers and you're watching on YouTube, just just look away for like, just close your eyes and I'll tell you when to look back because a, a lot of the artwork is slowly getting leaked and close some of eyes. it looks amazing. So this week they recently revealed there's, uh, last week we had the Poliwhirl, which everyone was getting well excited about and because it looks amazing. Like the artwork is just gorgeous. And then, this week we've had a Zapdos card, which I'm going to show on screen now. Oh, this is insane. This Zapdos card is insane. It that also has so Articuno and Moltres in the background just vibing. Oh, so looks nice. awesome. And then the piece de resistance, like they did with Paldera Evolved, and like they keep doing these cool, like again, similar to like this, these full art cards. They did the um, evolution line, right? They did the uh, the nine cards, one for each. Stunning. Um, so Damn, yeah. look at this this artwork for like Bulbasaur, Charmander, uh, and Venusaur, yeah. obviously, and then these Charizard ones as well. Look, that Charmander one, man, gorgeous, man. It's yeah, it, so it's so nice, so, so cute. And then obviously the Squirtle, the Pika card's nice as well. I think we 
Have you shown that? No. Yeah, I, don't I think we did show last no. week. This yeah. Pikachu card is ah, good. The Snorlax as well. These are uh, epic. For those of you that are listening to the podcast, we appreciate every one of you. But go check out the 151 um, alt arts that have been leaked. Uh, they're called they special are, illustration uh, cards. These are. Yeah, they're definitely worth a look. They look amazing. This set is going to be one to collect if you're into collecting. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, as we were, we were kind of talking about this before the pod. It seems to be going up a lot collecting at the moment, doesn't it? Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to get it's going to get really, really crazy and hectic with with this one five one set. Like holiday sets generally create create a lot of like FOMO around them. Anyway, it's not been too bad compared to what it was like over oh, COVID. when COVID oh was happening with hidden fates when and shining fates and stuff oh my yeah and you just couldn't get anything it was like horrendous crown zenith wasn't too bad at all no it you was actually easy to get a hold of stuff really easy it was really nice actually yeah and that was a really nice set but i feel like this 151 set because it's got that nostalgia kind of tied to it it's kind of gen one based and there's a lot of excitement around these like special art cards i just feel like it's gonna ramp up like it feels like the knock-on effect what's happening in japan right now is going to kind of knock on to the west and it's going to start happening the demand the demand in in some of the pokemon centers i don't know if we talked talked about it previously on the podcast but some of these videos i've seen are just, just like crazy stuff absolutely it's crazy madness at the minute to, to get some of the pr- the promos because the way japan works obviously it works a lot different but those well, ev promos mate to get the ev promos people were you had to spend like a certain amount of money it, was, it wasn't an egregious amount but a certain amount in the shop you could in the uk you can normally to get promos you, they're normally yeah. not as good but you normally have to spend a certain amount in a certain shop and essentially that's what they were doing in the pokemon centers but i mean these people were like ravaging the 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 whole of the Pokemon Center just to get these fucking promo cards, man. Like, it's actually it's, insane how much money. How yeah. it was like warm, uh, like Target or Walmart on like Black Friday. Oh my god, what it used to be yeah. like. Like, it looked brutal. Like from what I could see. So I mean, yeah, that's probably why we don't get like promotions like that over here because of situations like that. You know, like where you see these full ass grown men like fighting each other in stores over like pokemon card products it's like you know where'd you draw the line i like i would just be like you know i'd try and get stuff and if i can't get it i'm disappointed but i would never go to the extent of like you know physically touching another person and <laughs> go <laughs> away myself enforcing myself like that i like it just wouldn't even cross my mind i just think yeah i would like it but you know no, yeah, I... it's TCG at the end of the day. It will be reprinted probably, like the premium collectors boxes and stuff like that. It's sometimes things that you just have to be like, I can't get. Like I couldn't get celebrations. I couldn't get one for celebrations. Haven't got one for celebrations, and I was really sad about that. But it happens, right? There'll be another set. There'll be another batch of like special art cards. Pokemon you can pick up the singles and Pokemon stuff like that. always so... seem to manage to outdo themselves when it comes to comes to artwork and cards like you gotta remember people have tiny attention spans as well yes people will collect these and maybe they'll go up in value who knows we don't know Mm. this but you know there will almost undoubtedly be another set around the corner with just as good artwork if not better and that'll be worth loads of money so you know there'll be plenty of chances pokemon likes to make it very easy for you to spend loads of money when Mm. it comes to training cards so and the thing is like you look at like crown zenith you look at like shining fates the other holiday sets that have been recently and you can still pick them up now so like i think celebrations because it was a it was specifically for the 25th anniversary so but it wasn't that long ago i think around christmas you could still pick etbs up for like not too much over uh like rrp and I think like with 151, they'll print a lot of it, knowing that it's going to be a popular set. So you shouldn't have too much problems getting product if you're after it. And of course, like, you know, you can always pick up the singles uh, further down the line. I always advise waiting like six to nine months before you start picking singles up off eBay. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work because then you get like Moonbrain, which, you know, you've got to get the timing right. It's such a tricky thing, right? 
Because, like, I remember when that VMAX Umbra and all our card in Evolving Skies was first, like, up. And it was, like, 150, I think. And I'm like, at the time, I was like, that's far too much. <laughs> Little did you Some know. Little did I know. At the time, if I'd, if I'd known, <laughs> I would have been smart and picked up every single one for that because I would be, yeah, having a great time now. But I didn't. And now it's like, what, five, 500? Easily. Raw as well. This isn't yeah. even graded. Yeah. This is oh, a yeah. raw card. Yeah. <laughs> this is a <laughs> wild. Absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts, wild. man. Wild, mate. So, yeah, there are situations where it doesn't work out, but most of the time it does. Like, you look at all of those gold cards from... Which set was it? Oh, no, it was Crown Zenith, which the um, the the alt art gold cards for, like, Dialga, Palkia, and the Origin forms, and uh, Giratina, and then Arceus as well. So it was like, they were, like, expensive when they first dropped. Because I remember pulling the Palkia, in one of my packs and I was like, oh, this is really nice. And I remember it was selling at the time for like around 90 pounds. And I was like, ah, oh, should I sell it? And I never sold it. And it goes for like, I'm sure it's around 30, 30 pound now. So yeah, but the it's thing not is as well, that. if they print loads, like to say, yeah. when as soon as they release it, people get hold of it first. Those are the ones that will get, make the money. Unless it's a special card, like say the Moonbrion, which again is that's hot, that stuff is just hard to predict. You know, yeah. it's never going to be. It, it will normally drop because obviously people will then go buy loads, and then loads of people will sell it. The you know, more demand, the lower the price goes down. So that's yeah. essentially what will happen. Uh, but no, yeah. it, I do understand obviously people's FOMO. I mean, obviously we've had it, I've had it. We we obviously you got me into collecting. Uh, I've got a few bits. Um, <laughs> But no, it's modern money. Yes, sorry. Yes, it's frustrating. <laughs> but I do have an evolutions booster box. So not evolutions, evolving skies booster box. So you know you because of it, that. Yeah. So a sealed one, and two right. ETBs. So you know, hopefully that will be worth some money in the future. But That's we'll worth see. a lot now, mate. And yeah, I don't I see them reprinting that set. So no, no. Um, yeah, you've done well there, mate. So that is good. But um, yeah, Paldea evolved officially released today so that's really nice as of recording this video when this, this video, is friday the, the friday live, the 9th of june we are filming this so video, it is so. out so it'll be by the time the pod goes up on wednesday it'll have been out a few days so over the weekend and uh if you have been getting it let us know what your polls have been if you've been enjoying the set and things like that it would be great to hear those of you that have been enjoying it after its release date uh how you've been finding it so far and because uh, I haven't got any of it yet, so I'm kind of, yeah, gonna have to hold off a little bit longer before I can um, I can get my hands on any. Nice, nice. So nice. we have one thing from Scott's Goody Bag this week because <laughs> we haven't had a lot of time. I'm as sorry, we, as I'm we've sorry. mentioned, because of the have camera you... issues we got this week, I've just opened it. <laughs> you've seen it? Okay. Have you? You've seen okay. it? Okay. I've seen it. I've spoiled it. He spoiled yeah. it for himself. Okay, so. Okay. Basically, someone went to uh, Fan Anime 2023 and they photographed their Pokemon cosplays there and they were really cool. So I thought we'd show them because they look awesome. Um, so this was a... For those listening, you, you don't have to come watch the video. This was a Metagross, like a human Metagross cosplay and they have like a big like Metagross staff. Um, it's like a big... It's, it's a bit like... Um, Tinkerton's hammer, but like it's a, a Metagross cool. a Metagross leg at the top. Yeah, it's um, very cool. Like, it's like... it's awesome. And then there's also Tinkerton so, is very cool. There's also a Tinkerton cosplay that looks awesome. I love that. That hammer is absolutely is huge, banging. bro. That is sick. It's amazing. So cool. It's so like it just. I get. I like have so much admiration for these people that like do these cosplays because they make the props themselves for the most part, right? Or they get the help, but they do such a good job with them. Cos They're like Cosplaying is literally an art form. Like, yeah, it, it really it, is. It is you know, it's incredible. Ab it's absolutely amazing. Like, I couldn't, I don't even know where I would start to make that hammer. And the hammer that I would end up with, it would, well, it would, <laughs> it would be quite funny because I should really do it and then we can all have a laugh at it, but it would look nothing like that, you know? It would look like I'd made it at home, whereas that looks like you've kind of bought it at a store. 
It's amazing, yeah. Anyway, on a tangent. No, it um, is it is wicked. But yeah, good, no. Uh, nurse, nurse Jen. Uh, no, no, Officer Jenny. Officer Jenny. With, also, uh, Beerus, just, Beerus just, in the background there. Little shout out to Beerus from Dragon Ball Z. I've just had a uh, a quick epiphany. Um, obviously, we have Scott's goodie bag every episode. Yes. Um, we have a we have a Twitter page now. So if anyone finds anything super interesting Pokemon related, tweet us, tweet at, at us, or send it or DM it to me or whatever, and you know we'll, maybe we'll show it on the pod. Because this would be good. Yeah. There's so much this weird. There's so much weird stuff. Or again, if there's anything you you want us to talk about, or you see anything, just tweet at the podcast at Pugwalls Podcast on on Twitter. We'll see and it. And we will feature it. And we, we, we can will. we will have a look at featuring it on the channel because Great idea, Scott. We, we we were discussing before the podcast that, you know, obviously we want to make this podcast as accessible to everyone. Like just for Pokemon fans, we do understand that we have this obviously uh we have roots in in competitive scene obviously because that's how me and lee met and that's where the podcast kind of started but we obviously want to make this inclusive for everyone we don't want to bore people with um i know two people do enjoy um the, the competitive aspect of it but you know we want to cover sort of all aspects of pokemon and it doesn't necessarily have to be news uh but you know any sort of like topic we want to talk about so you know anything you you think would be interesting to talk about um you know maybe one episode we want to start exploring topics or maybe theming the episodes could be really fun um because for example uh we were talking before the podcast um about you know our favorite games and which yeah. which which are the best pokemon games and basically we thought it'd be a good idea to talk about that so that's what we're going to do right now so we are i'm just gonna just i'm just gonna jump in here i'm opening wipes <laughs> and i'm wiping my face and i'm sorry but i have to do it like the hay I, fever I is suffer, getting to you i suffer really bad with hay fever and that they've coined it a uh, pollen bomb this weekend because it's going to be so high so i'm struggling a little bit i've got these hay fever relief wipes Ooh. and um so that's why i'm using it if I look a uh-huh. bit like my eyes are mm-hmm. tired or anything like that, it's just because they're irritated and I sympathize with any fellow hair fever sufferers out there uh, because it is really bad. This week's killed me, mate, and um, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow when the uh, the pollen bombs men are go off. Sounds like a Pokemon move, doesn't it? <laughs> That'd be a sick move. <laughs> pollen bomb. Yeah, something like a Moongus needs that or some like, yeah, it sounds like a good move. It could be like, uh, pollen puffs, um, Gigantamax move, you know, yeah, what it turns yeah. into just, just would... the user goes Idiot. blind, yeah, <laughs> you, can't, you can't see for two turns, you, you can't see what your opponent I've, did. I've literally, I would wear them, but I feel like I'd be like a bit like Maverick from Top Gun, so I'm not gonna wear them. But they do, the sunglasses like help out so much, like more than you can believe, like they just stop any pollen getting in your eyes. I'm in a closed room at the minute, so it should be all right, but. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that, and yeah, I um, yeah, I didn't want you thinking that I was just sitting here looking rough and ready to go. But just, ha- just having that, a wash mid podcast. Mid wash, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it has actually helped. It's got like you. Oh no, it no, well, so that's nice. So rinse your eyes out, because yeah, yeah. I'm very fortunate. I don't, you know, I don't get, I don't suffer from hay fever, but I know, as I mentioned before the podcast, one of my colleagues at work suffers was suffering really badly this weekend so you know mm. this week sorry so you know it, it can be bad unfortunately but you know so i interrupted though mate we would get you were talking about favorite pokemon games right yeah yeah because i think you know obviously i do find it interesting talking about favorite pokemon games right and i, I think i've mentioned this story to you as well in the past you, you always see these um you always see these like uh, graphics online right of these which is your favorite pokemon game and it will have all the pokemon games listed and then next to it, it will have an age range and it's always incredibly accurate and you know i always think oh this is just mm. some this is just silly like it's it's obviously not true or whatever but mm-hmm. then obviously i did it and i was like 
um, for me, obviously, my favourite. Well, not obviously. I don't know if you know this because I'm I'm 24, um, and according to a lot of the charts, my favourite game is Pokemon Diamond or Gen 4, and lo and behold, that is my favourite. And I was at an event recently, and I was talking to the someone, and I was like, "Oh, have you ever been to an event before?" He's like, "No." I was like, "Have you just got into Pokemon with Scarlet and Violet?" He's like, "No." Um, I started playing in Gen Four. It's my favourite game. I was like, "Cool." And then I had that the image of like that graphic in my head, and I was like, "Are you 24?" And it was like, "I am actually," and I was like, "Huh." Maybe like, said, are you psychic? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, there's there's this there's definitely this cadence of you know it definitely works, doesn't it? I think it works. I think sure. I think for a lot of people, their first Pokemon game is always gonna have um is always gonna be have a soft spot in their heart and it was always gonna sort of always kind of be their favourite. Um, mm. you know, I think that's one of the reasons why they keep Hamping on like Gen One stuff, like obviously, it obviously, it is nostalgia because, yeah, but, you know, it's it's for all like the OG Pokemon fans and for those people like myself uh, who you know obviously start playing that early, um, because I like I said I started with Gen Four and then I I remember playing G- Gen Three uh, briefly after that, um, you know, obviously the people who play Gen One are like oh it's awesome, um, it's like if they started to release loads of like diamond and pearl themed stuff randomly you'd be like oh this is wicked it's just like my, yeah, my childhood yeah. so you know i think i think it, it is obviously cool um the people have their favorites um and they, they obviously they do change um for me um gen 4 i just have you know i mean even it's so weird like because i feel like the music in pokemon is so nostalgic and it's almost like Whenever, yeah. whenever I so obviously I was, I was like playing Diamond and Pearl when I was like uh, eight or nine, ten, mm-hmm. and I remember going on holiday playing it. Like obviously being a ch- like when you're a child, and obviously the DS was such a good console. So just like playing it, it hiding under my my pillow, under my blanket, playing at night, mm-hmm. playing it in the mall, basically playing it non-stop, basically because obviously it was great. It was just like peak life. Obviously at that age, you got no worries. Pokemon's out, you're vibing, you're playing with your friends. And so now, like, whenever I hear, like, any root music from Gen 4, my brain just, like... You know the scene in, the scene in Ratatouille where he, where, yeah, yeah. Where, where he goes to eat uh, the the um the food and he just, he just gets taken back? That is literally... Whenever I hear Gen 4 music, I'm literally just, like... You're back there. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just vibing away in my chair I'm like damn this is this, nah, those are the good times baby I mean it's this just it's, about. it's just so weird and then yeah obviously after that I played Gen 3 and for me as much as it pains me to say I think Gen 3 not pains me but like obviously Diamond and Pearl I've always said is my favourite generation the Gen 4 but then I've played Gen 3 quite a lot um, mm. and that's also great obviously we had the really good remakes as well um probably the, would you say the best remake or would you, would you think that art oh, gold and soul silver were better because what this what, is... fire fire red and leaf green oh i forgot about that as well which remix were you talking about hot gold soul silver yeah that's what i was gonna say like, i have all, the, I have say all the remakes which which ones forget bdsb that was shit <laughs> which yeah. ones do you think <laughs> out of um as much as it pains me to say that out out of Fire Red and Leaf Green, Hot Gold Soul Silver, and Omega Ruby Alpha oh, Sapphire, which yeah, which Omega one do you Ruby think Alpha for you? Mm. What was your favourite? For me uh, personally, I I have to go uh, Hot Gold Soul Silver. I have to. I love the Johto region though. I don't feel like Johto's that loved a region, but I I honestly I have such a soft spot for uh, Gold Silver and Crystal. And how do you feel about the gen, the gen two starters? Because love them, mate. I've never been a uh, massive Type fan Ocean. of them. Type Ocean is like legit, like uh, one of my my favorite starters of, of like all the starters. Really? I, yeah, I really love Type Ocean, like Cyndaquil. I remember when I first saw it, the very first time I saw Cyndaquil, and I was like, oh my god, this thing looks 
is. It's got like fire coming out its back. It is cool. It's like a little well. I, at the time, it does look like a mole, but it, I, it, at the time, I just thought it was like a cool little animal with fire coming out of its back, and I was like, "This is this is what it's all about." And then Typhlosion, it's like a big fire dog thing, or whatever it is, but more like a ferret or something like that. Uh, but it's very cool. Yeah, I love it, mate. I actually like um, Meganium as well. You know, I think that's another starter that gets like no love. I actually, when I was doing the, the casting over in Turin and one of the sets that we were doing, some of the pre-record stuff, they had this huge Meganium plush. And I was like, Meganium is such a cool Pokemon. It's just, it just it does look, it does look about. really nice as well. Like yeah. the flower around, the pig flower around its neck. Yeah, awesome. it's so cool. I like, yeah. And for Alligator, come on. Like, what's not to like about for Alligator? They're cool starter Evos. Like, I think they're, yeah. they're very cool. Gen 2 also had Tyranitar. So I introduced Ooh, Tyranitar. Great Pokemon. Had, Chuckle had as well. Ooh, Chuckle. Another great Pokemon. Ooh. Garmory. Umbrian. Espion. Ooh. Was Espion? Actually, no. I think Umbrian was. I don't know if Espion was introduced then or if it was Gen 3. I'm not too sure. I could be like... No, it must have been. I'm, uh, I don't know. It must have been. No, it might have been Gen 3 because then with Coliseum and stuff... This being came out. But yeah, Umbrian was definitely introduced there. Um, there was loads of good stuff. Like, Gen 2 didn't have many new Pokemon added to the games, but it was just, it was cool. And the fact that you could kind of go back to Kanto and do, so you could, you didn't have just eight gyms to beat. You kind of had 16. So you beat that. And it, it wasn't so much going back to Kanto that was cool. I think it was just the aspect of the post game where you had to go to another region and you had more to kind content, of. Right? Could, yeah, yeah, and and that's what I really enjoyed about it. I think more than going back to Kanto and it being nostalgic, which it of course would have been, but the fact that you can kind of continue on, you've complete that part of the game, the main game, and then you can go to another region and kind of start again, but it's like exponentially a lot harder, and especially because you've got that nostalgia factor there, it's a lot harder than what it ever was when you originally played the games. You're like rebattling all these gym leaders that are like, got these crazy Pokemon that are way stronger now and it's actually tough and then you have to kind of go through that and then you meet Red at the end of the game which is very cool for that kind of final battle on Mount Silver. It's ah, uh, there's just so many good things about it and then they wrapped it all up and repackaged it for Hot Gold Soul Silver and it was yeah it was epic. You're making me want to play I had this weird wave of like yeah. the other day like I want to yeah. go play through all these old games because I don't remember I don't remember black and white at all like really yeah like i have both black and white and black and white too yeah and I, I i remember getting it on release day and playing it but i don't really remember anything else and obviously as we've mentioned you know we should fingers crossed should be getting black and white 2 remakes soonish so yeah it kind of make me want i would like to have a well i guess i could like maybe leave it and then be like oh it's a new game for me because i can't remember uh, it's probably a good time to play it now because there's, you've got like room before the DLCs drop, so to play it, and then there's enough room from you playing it to when, like next November, when it's probably likely to drop before you have to play it again. So you've got yeah. a nice little yeah. gap there. So it's like now is like optimal time. Black and white is just incredible. I mean, the story in black and white, um, you know, protagonist with like N, one of the best. That we've had, I think. Is that is that what and you the think? The best protagonist. N, yeah, I think so, mate. N is just. What just... about best, best bad team? Which one do you think? Ooh, Ooh. I'll give you the best, wor the worst one in my opinion. In in <laughs> like, and I love this game. <laughs> I love I love X and Y, but Team Flare. <laughs> like Lysander, like I mean, is a bad guy team leader, bad guy. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious from the first time you see him that like, yep, you're the the big bad of this game. You ain't hiding anything behind that like you, fire red hair you, of yours. You liked, you thought that was worse than Team Scream. Team Scream, wasn't that what the X and Y one was called? No, X and, X y, and was y, Scarlet and Violet. What Scarlet and Violet? What the guy? Weren't they called Scream? Scarlet and Violet. No, Star. no Scarlet and Violet. Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield. Words. Team Yell. Yeah. 
Do you not think uh, Team Yale was worse? They weren't really a bad guy team, though, were they? Yeah, I don't classify them as the bad guy team because they weren't really... Well, they, well, they like... were meant to be the game's version of it. Yeah, but there wasn't really a bad guy team in it, you know? So I don't really class them. I think in Sword and Shield, it's a bit of an outlier for bad guys, for Pokemon bad guy teams, right? I feel like because they were more like cheerleaders for Marnie, right? And they kind of like Ooh. hung out with peers. They didn't really do anything bad in the games either. They weren't like dealing Pokemon. They weren't doing anything bad in the games other than cheerleading for Marnie and kind of badmouthing like Marnie's opponents, but not really badmouthing them. So they were just kind of like friends supporting their friend. So at least that's how I viewed it. So I didn't really like, they just wore uniforms that were kind of like, okay, well, this is our bad guy team, but we're not really a bad guy team. It's not they're like more, Team Skull. They're more of right? an antagonist. Like one than... of the best things out of Sun and Moon were Team Skull, right? And Guzma. I mean, the redemption arc of Guzma in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, probably one of the best things I, like, I've, I've played out of that kind of generation. Like one of my favorite things. I love Guzma like, so much as a character. He's very cool. And that redemption arc where he kind of, you know, kind of comes to the rescue at the end, um, helping you out against the Ultra Beasts is very cool. So I love that. Um, best bad guy team, though? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Which one do you think had, had the best motivation? Because they all had, like, obviously they are <laughs> specific, specifically related to, like, yeah, the, the, the box art legendaries, but, like, Cyrus is very cool as well. Yeah, Cyrus, Cyrus, Cyrus is awesome. Team Galactic is ha very cool. Having, having all of them, all of the like his little um, lassies called after like the planets as well, like Mars yes. and Jupiter. Yeah. Well, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I like that. I like Team Galactic. Very, very cool bad guy team. Definitely up there, I think, in the top echelon of bad guy teams. Team Rocket's motivations are hard to kind of justify because it's just about, like, Giovanni wanting to kind of, like, just, I guess, like, have the, the strongest Pokemon to kind of take over the world, right? It's, it's kind of, like, it's that what about old. about Gen 3? That old, and we'll old we'll, adage we'll the land just, and the sea? Well, that's cool, yeah. Team Aqua and Team Magma, it's very cool. Land versus sea. Uh, I do like that a lot. What are the bad guys in Gen 5? I can't actually remember. What in... Um, black in and white. Black and white. Uh, it was... Uh, it was... It's Geats... Is it Geatus or Geatus? was the the, um, the leader and it was Plasma, Team Plasma. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But then, like, the Knights, weren't they, almost? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, looking yeah, like yeah. Knights, yeah. So, Team Plasma. They're, they're a little bit forgettable, like, as a bad guy team at least for me like they're not one of the more memorable ones not like iconic like team magma team aqua because you've got like groudon and kyoga tied to those i think that's what makes them so good um and cyrus obviously with team galactic had like dialga and palkia which is very cool and then there's a whole giratina story that kind of went on from there uh and also team rocket was kind of nice because i guess you had like it was the whole ideology of like mewtwo and how mewtwo came to be this pokemon because of the experiments that giovanni was kind of doing with mew and the whole where the movie come the from itself. Thing. yeah yeah it's very very cool it's a great movie and, the um, first movie it oh, it's so good so mate. it's so good it's a banger um even the second movie is very cool as well uh and it's Team Rocket in gold and silver as well. So you've got like that team. And then obviously you had Team Rainbow Rocket featuring, was it Ultra Sun and Moon? I think they came back, oh. didn't they? Which was very cool. I, it's hard. I'm hard. Sun and Moon is, is, a, is, a, is also very forgettable for me because I, I don't think that was probably one of the most hated generations. Do you think? Uh, I, 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 did, I really disliked it. Yeah, I, I didn't like it. I don't it. know it's many people that liked it. This, it's weird, though, because there's, like, features of that game that I really enjoy. Like, I've already talked about Guzma. I think Team Skull is a very cool team. Like, I, I love the whole vibe of that team. And I love what they tried to do with Team Skull and, like, how they were portrayed in their backstory and things. And Guzma is a very cool character. Like I say, I really like Guzma's vibe with 
Kuzma's character. I like the backstory with him. And I like how the, the kind of redemption arc works through the games. But there's like Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon. I mean, they have the, the kind of, is it the Delta episode at the end, which is very good. But other than that, and there's some nice, there's some cool characters in it. And I do like the Pokemon that are featured, like some really cool Pokemon. But the general story of the games, this, the, the gameplay, I really didn't enjoy. Okay. I don't know why. I really don't know why, mate. It's it's a weird one. Um, but Team Flare are definitely the worst bad guy team, in my opinion. I'm not including Team Yell. And Team Star aren't really a bad guy team either because yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that whole story arc and, and Scarlet and Violet as well. So they're not really bad. They're just kind of, you know, just lost souls trying to find their way in the world. And it also has a nice end as well. Um, but I don't think we've actually met the bad guy team in Scarlet and Violet yet, you know. I think we'll meet them in the DLC, which is going to be very cool, I think, how it plays out. At least in my mind. Um, so we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, so Team Flare, bottom of the pile by a long, long way. Lysander is terrible. Um, and then I have to probably put Team Rocket at the top, mate. It's like such a cop-out answer, right? But I just feel like they're kind of like the OGs, right? And Giovanni's pretty cool as a character. His reasoning for kind of world domination doesn't really make sense to me. He just want he just wants to rule, right? I was reading a Pokemon, but it, it's kind of satisfying beating Team Rocket every time you beat them because you're like, yeah, stop stealing Pokemon. You know. This is a weird tan not tangent, but talking about the teams and stuff. Mm. I saw some meme about how Cyrus just gives you the Master Ball. All the other yeah, all the others are just like, no, you have to come get it. And he's like, nah, yeah. here you go. <laughs> well, you get it in, like, Gen 1. You get it from, um, oh, is it Mr. P Mr. Pokemon? I can't remember if it's Mr. Pokemon or whatever. It's in the, um, it's Saffron City. After you beat, after you save him from Giovanni's clutches, you get given the Master Ball by him. I don't think Giovanni ever would give you it either, which makes sense for his character. But, yeah. You're right, like the Master Ball is something that you kind of obtain. Yeah, Cyrus just hands it over, right? Kind of funny. But yeah, the, the I, I really do like um, Cyrus. I think the whole arc in Diamond and Pearl with the bad guy team is very cool as well. They did they did a good job. So they did good. Which game would you say is your favourite then? Which game is my favourite? This is so hard. I knew this what was coming if, what, up. What, if, what, what if you rank your top three? Okay, my top three. I'm surprisingly because I, I did play. My first Pokemon game was Red, Blue and Yellow. Like nostalgically, I, like it'll always have a special place for me. But it's not in my top three. Red, Blue and Yellow. Not my top three games. Interesting, interesting. Getting spicy though. Yeah. Very spicy. Mm. Yeah, I think... Um, I'll always love it, and I'll always love going back, and I the replay value it's got with me, it will never get old. I can play it over and over and over again because there's just you know different things to do in it. And like you say, it's the, the music when you go back to it, but if I'm putting it up against other Pokemon games, it's definitely not one of my favorites, not one of my, not one of the best. So, my best Pokemon games. I am going to put... Okay, what am I starting at? Three to one or one to three? We will Everything. start. We will start with. Uh, we'll start with three, and then we'll go. Yeah. So we'll start with your third, second, and, th and then your top. Your, your top okay. Player. Okay. And these are main series titles. I can't like throw Legends Arceus in here. No, out of everything. Out of everything. Yeah, send it. What, what, what are your top three games? Pokemon games. Of everything. Okay. Uh, in, in number three, I'm going to put Legends Arceus. I'm going to slot it right in there. Damn. Okay. I know you do Let's like that on. game. I know you do like that a lot. I love that game. I love that game so much. Um, I think there's so many good things about it. Like, the music for one, we've talked about how, like, influential the music can be on your, like, impressions of a game. But I don't think I've loved music from a Pokemon game as much as I've loved it from Legends Arceus. 
I just feel like they just absolutely nailed it with that game. Man, I need to and play they... it. <laughs> I need to actually <laughs> play it. They honestly You're making made, me like, want to play it. They just they nailed every bit of music with it, and every bit of music in the games is just so beautifully done. It's just it's. I don't know. In my opinion, the whole game is a bit of a masterpiece. I just really loved it. I think aesthetically it looks good. It's got a kind of open world feel to it before we even had an open world Pokemon yep. game. It's got lots of areas to explore, lots of things to do. It's got like new Mechanics. aspects to it. Yeah, where Pokemon actually can attack you as a character, which I feel like is a very cool feature. So Pokemon act like you would expect wild animals to act in the wild so it's got that very kind of real feel to it when you're playing the games yeah so and the story and the the twists in the story are very cool so i will put that in at number three number two i am going to put hmm this is a very difficult one it's very difficult i am gonna put pokemon emerald in at number two Good. yeah Good shout, Pokemon, good shout. That's Pokemon a good shout. Emerald, right there, right there. Yeah. Uh, any, because what, I what's think... your reasoning for that, behind that one? Uh, the Battle Factory. <laughs> you know what? I um, thought you might say that. I thought you might say that. It's a big that. factor in it, for yeah. sure. Um, I just love how big the game is and how much there is to do in the game. Um, and all the extras that are there from, like, Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah, I just think it's a really good... It's like just a complete game, right? It's just a complete game. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, you know what? I've just, I've just remembered about Platinum. I can't put Platinum in my top three. I really enjoyed Platinum as well. But um, my number one is Hot Gold, Soul, Silver. Hot Gold, Soul, Silver. Not, so, not yeah. Silver and Gold. Just Hot Gold, Soul, Silver. Hot Gold, Soul, Silver, yeah. That is my my number one why my number one why pick. though why those two are the just regular gold and silver uh because the, graphically it's better um the poker it's walker. Got, yeah the poker walker um the updated features in it as well mm -hmm. um i did a lot of like rng manipulation in in those games which you couldn't really do in the original ones and also like because it was like um a more recent generation, you could kind of trade Pokemon out of that. So you could still access them in, like, um, newer games, you know? Uh, whereas you can't... They're pretty much locked in, in gold and silver, the original ones. Like, I'll always have that, like... It's a bit like red and blue and yellow. Like, I'll always have that, like, proper love for those original ones. But I think the remake... They, like, they nailed the remakes. Like, they made the remakes better than anything I expected them to be. And I think the playability factor with those games is just so much to do in them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's why, mate. I really want to go back and play them because it's been such a long time since I've played those games. And recently I've been booting up a lot of my older generation games and trading stuff to Pokemon Home um, through transfer and then through bank to get them into Scarlet and Violet, which is really cool because I just traded... Like, I went into my Pearl Cartridge because I was like... I need a, an Arceus. I was like, I'm sure I've got one on my Pearl cartridge. And I booted it up, and there's like over 500 hours on that cart, and everything's on there. So, like, all of my like competitive teams from when I compete with that cartridge are still on there, which is really nice to kind of go through stuff. So, my 2010 Nationals team from uh, UK Nationals, where I got third place that year. That team's still in that game. So it was really like, it was really nice, like kind of just seeing those Pokemon that I used in that tournament to get my first Worlds invite. Like they're still there. And like the nicknames that I give them are kind of funny, kind of goofy, but it's like really nice that they're there. And then I did get an Arceus from an event that year in 2010 uh, from games. So I was like, bonus, transferred it, to black and white and then through poker transporter to bank and then bank onto home which was very good now it's in scarlet and violet that arcus so that's that's really cool um yeah so i don't know what you're saying mate i've just went off on a tangent again Sorry. no no i asked you what your favorite pokemon <laughs> games were to rank them yeah so that that would be it i think so pokemon legends arceus for sure 
then Pokemon Emerald, because it's got to be up there, I think, in everyone's top three, at least in my opinion. And then, yeah, I think the creme de la creme of all Pokemon titles that we've had is Hot Gold, Soul Silver. And I feel like I've enjoyed everything after that, but I feel like they're yet to top that game. But they might do it with Black and White, you know? The Black and White remakes, it might be Black and White 3 that we get. Black and Black 3 and White 3. Who knows? That might be the one. Interesting. What about you, mate? What is your what's your top three? And let's start. Let's rewind this a little bit. What's your what's your favorite bad guy team? My favorite bad guy team. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I really are... say it's, uh, Team Flair. <laughs> Lysander. Well, well actually. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so. I like. I. I don't know. Team Galactic for me is just so iconic. I don't know yeah. if it comes back to this, this nostalgia for me playing Gen Four, but like, I don't know. Like, I just the grunts are just like stupid. They all have the same color, like blue hair. It's just, and then like I said, the all like the the, the admirals or generals or whatever they're all named after the planets. Mars, it's really Jupiter. cool. Mars yeah. and Jupiter and Saturn, as well. Yeah. I just, I just, I just, yeah, I just really cool. like that. I think and I they're do... pretty strong as well. Like when you're taking them on, like when you're playing that game for the first time, they're like you can't. They're not like difficult, difficult, but they're like they're more difficult one than what you would expect them to be, which I like for like the the admins, you know. Mm. Mm. I think I would have to agree with you with Team Flair, uh, for okay. for the worst. Because, yeah. um, funny enough, I can't remember anything about them. So that means that they are very forgettable. Yes. And which means they weren't very good. So I'm going to go with they're the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, my top three Pokemon games is a bit of a tough one, really. Um, because I'm not sure I can actually remember enough of them to rank them clearly. Okay. But if I was to say off the top of my head now, I've got to think back and think of the ones that, I'm, you know, I'm going to put, I'm going to put, I'm going to put, this is going to be like, this is going to cause a bit of problems, but I'm going to say <laughs> Pokemon Diamond, I'm going to put third. And I'm not going to say okay. Pokemon Platinum because I, Pokemon Diamond was the first Pokemon game. I know Platinum has more stuff, but for me, I'm putting Diamond first. Yes, technically, uh, it, Platinum is the same game. However, I'm putting Diamond first. I respect that. As first. Third. As third. Third. No, third. No, no, no. Okay. Third. Okay, third. Okay. And then... Okay. And then... Oh, see, I think... Hmm, you know what? I'm just trying to roll back the generations in my head now. Yeah. Sun and Moon was ass. I can't remember black and white. Sun and Moon, and then you had. Um, see, I don't know where I don't know whether that. to put. Mm, see, I like Gen Three. But I'm trying to think yeah. whether I prefer the remakes or the original, mm-hmm. because the remakes were really cool. Um, oh. Hmm, I've played Emerald. I played Sapphire. I played Ruby multiple times, and Oras. You know what? I'm gonna put. Purely based on the mechanics that I added, I'm going to put Auras as second. No, okay. no, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is all. I'm going to I'm going to bump this all forward. <laughs> In third place, third place, I'm going to put Scarlet and Violet because okay. I like all the stuff they've actually chosen. I mm-hmm. like the direction the game is in. Um, I know it's had its problems, but as we've talked about, like in terms of a Pokemon game, it's actually really fun probably the best fun the most fun we've had for a long time there was a lot of content there yeah. three different storylines good and then i would definitely agree with you on that yeah and then i would put gen 4 i.e pokemon diamond forget mm. bdsp that's it shit and a second and then first place i'm gonna put our ass because, okay cool because the introduction of I megas do... i really like the megas I'm just going to squeak in here. If I had to choose just main series titles, so if Pokemon Legends Arceus wasn't in that, then Scarlet and Violet would have been my number three. Yeah. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. 
So Oras, a very good pick, mate. Brilliant games. Brilliant games. Like the introduction of the red and the blue orbs and yes. requires that as well. Ooh. So the problem like, with the problem forms. The problem forms. Yeah, you can't go wrong with those games. I think that generation overall was just brilliant. You know, Do you know X why it was so good? And probably mm. why you chose Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And probably mm. why BDSP shit is because it was a main series game. BDSP was not a main series game. And that's why it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just a faithful remake, wasn't it? It was just really yeah. just uh, but a, a, like a clone. I think that much. has proven that we don't want faithful remakes. I feel like BDSP, though, gets bashed on way too much. The Grand Underground, right? In BDSP, what? was very cool, mate. It but other cool. than a slightly different look and the fact that you can play it on a Switch, like what what is the point of it? Why would I not just go play it on my DS? I'm just I'm just playing Devil's Advocate here. I love Gen Four. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there isn't really much difference graphically. That's a bit cleaner on 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 the Switch, of course. Um, you can't Grand play. Underground. You can't play. You can different. play on the Switch, probably. I guess is is the main the main draw of it, obviously. Yeah. I do understand yeah. that a lot of remakes are literally. Hmm, maybe they should have called it a remaster rather than a remake. Yeah, probably. Because that's what I'd call, they called it, pass it more a out. faithful remake. That's yeah. what they, they coined it, wasn't it? Faithful remake. Yeah. I, I, um, I think a remaster would make more sense. Yeah. I feel like I'm the only one that enjoyed those games. Like, I don't... Like, I didn't have anything bad to say about it. Like, I had a really enjoyable experience with BDSP. Yeah, because it's just Gen 4. That's, it's just, yeah. that, that's why. Yeah. It's but the I, same I game. even... You can go back when the I I pretty sure I stream live streamed the announcement of BDSP, and in that live stream, when it gets revealed for the first time, I felt like I was the only one at the time that was like, the chibi character art looks kind of cool. I'm excited. No, to play I, it. I I genuinely think I like the art style as well. I do like the art style yeah. for BDSP. I think it was like. It's very close to the the originals, just a little bit different, a little bit better. Uh, I think um, I think maybe what it is, maybe in my head, the problem that I have, and maybe this is the reason why I haven't allowed myself to enjoy it, is because mm. I wanted I wanted something more, and I haven't let I haven't let that go. So yeah. Maybe I just I need to accept it for what it is. I think because it is a very good generation, right? It's got a good story to it, like you say, it's got a good bad guy team. It's got a lot of good characters in it, a lot of good Pokemon. Um, we get a lot. Of I mean, like, we get a lot of legendaries from Gen Four. We get Cresselia, we get Darkrai, we get Shaman. Yeah, you know, we get the I mean, the starters. the Lake Trios. The starters are really popular as well. Yeah, Fernip and Polion, Totara. Totara. Yeah, <laughs> but but I think that you you I think you nailed it. I think people were expecting a Sword and Shield type of game, but it's it's brilliant. It's Diamond and Pearl, right? And that is not what we got delivered. I wonder, and I think I wonder what the numbers were like. For... Bad. I don't think it did well at all, mate. I don't think it was terrible, but I don't think... I think it did about the same as Pokemon Legends Arceus. So I think it did around the same, like that 14 million units sold mark, which for a Pokemon game is not good. It, those numbers do not suggest that there would be any further developments with those titles which is worrying for the the legend series because pokemon legends arceus was not as popular as i thought it would be and um with i think that it got around the same sort of numbers as let's go pikachu and eevee which has never had any sort of sequel to it so that's why i don't i'm not really sure if we're going to see another legends game which would be kind of sad if we don't but i we'll say i think i think like you mentioned i think what they've probably done with a lot of these side games is that they're using them as experiments or tests to see what people yeah. like. So but uh, they might just make a new test experiment, like in it. Uh, yeah, but the, legends, but, but again, there's no reason why they haven't implemented all this stuff, a lot of the stuff mm. from Legends Arceus into Gen Ten. Obviously, we won't know that until it comes out, so you never know. Yeah, that's very true. We'll have to. We've only got a couple of years to wait now, though, so not too long. Um, but yeah, and then you've got the spin-off games. You've got like Pokemon Coliseum, 
Uh, you got Gills of Darkness, which are both respectable games in their own right. Um, Ranger. Oh, did you? Oh, fuck. I forgot about Pokemon Ranger, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Pokemon Ranger is very cool. Oh, I again. Like Pokemon, Pokemon of... Conquest. Did you ever play that? I did not. Yeah. That's people like people game. big loved Mystery Dungeon as well. Yeah, Mystery Dungeons. Yeah. Um, and then you got the stadium games as well. You got Battle Revolution. I didn't really because they're battle simulators, so I can't really feel like I can put them in. But I mean, the amount of hours they played on Pokemon Battle Revolution was just ridiculous. Like that game is legit fire that was that was very cool because you could actually online battle with that as well um and that was with uh gen gen 4 that was the so, Wii, wasn't it yes yeah yeah that was a Wii. that was amazing i remember going like i remember getting it and just playing online like relentlessly for like a year getting ready for um, the next UK Nats, and then they announced it was going to be uh, legendaries with like uh, restricted Pokemon. That was the first so, Uber uh, format, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, and probably the best one in my opinion because right. it was only like eight, eight restricted Pokemon that you could choose. Uh -huh. So there was like uh, what was that? Mewtwo, Hall, Lugia, um, Groudon, then there was Kyogre, Kyogre Groudon, Rayquaza, and then you had Dialga. Palkia and Giratina. So yeah, nine. It was nine altogether. And the nice thing was uh, you could have up to four. No. You could technically have a team of six of them. No, you couldn't. You couldn't. You could have up to four restricted. So you could out of those nine, you could have four of them on your team of six. But you could only bring two to the four Pokemon that you were bringing into battle. So like my Nationals team was Kyogre, Infernip, Abomasnow, Snow, oh. Dialga, oh. Alkia, oh. and Metagross. Damn, yeah. what a team. What a team. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. So that, yeah, I think it was good because I think back then as well, they weren't like, they were stronger, but they weren't like so overpowered. Like, they weren't like super oppressive. Like, things like Abomasnow, Snow, things like Tyranitar were like good anti weather counters to Groudon and Kyogre. And, and worked well in the format and saw play at Worlds. Subsequently, I mean, Tyranitar was on the Japan uh, national, well, the, the Japan finalist uh, players team against Ray, who was running Groudon. Um, so, yeah, you know, very good format. Yes. So you've got those games as well, of course. So there's loads, mate. There's lots, but I, I really like your selection. I really like it. Scarlet and Violet in there is nice as well. We didn't even mention Sword and Shield in there, which is quite funny. I don't feel like the this, this story in Sword and Shield was very strong, though. No, I think the biggest problem for me with Sword and Shield is that I played it two weeks before COVID. Or two weeks when it came out and then didn't play it until after COVID. Really? That that's the most I played of it. So most of the stuff wow. from Sword and Shield I actually don't remember. So I have this really weird potato memory where I have a good memory, but if I want to retain information, I have to like make an effort to learn it. And so like this is a weird tangent, but like song song lyrics or just random info that I read online, I can't remember it unless I like repeatedly read it or you know uh, just read more about it or find somewhere memorizing it and i think that's a problem i have with a lot of pokemon games is yeah i've only actually played through the reason gen 4 and gen 3 are so prominent in my mind is because i've played through them a lot i mm. haven't played through a lot of the others much at all i think i've only played through black and white once black and white 2 once sun and moon once i've yeah. only played through them all for them all once so that's probably why i can't remember most of it it looked strangely with with sword and shield i played through sword that was my main game and i played through shield but i really ran through a lot of the stuff i don't really think i completed either i just did it so i could get to like the isle of armor dlc so stuff i never even played the dlc for sword and shield wow neither of them nope 
Wow. Name, all of them. Yeah. Wow. See, I haven't really replayed Sword and Shield at all. I've never really went back and replayed it. I maybe played through it maybe three times in total. Mm -hmm. um, Sun and Moon, I played through probably twice. And Ultra Sun and Moon, I played through once. So, yeah, I mean, that says a lot, really. Um, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, I played through a couple of times. Like, I had it on both cards. I never re-ran re through it. X and Y... Um, why I played through this? Is a weird tangent. Why did they mm. from Gen 5? Why did they just ditch the idea of a third game in that second year release cycle? Why did, yeah, why did they start calling them two and not you know, we had uh, fucking platinum, we had emerald, yeah. we had crystal, yeah, why did we not have? Pokemon, this is a bad example, grey or for for the, instead of black and white 2 or, you know, Pokemon Zygarde yeah. or Pokemon Z for in the Pokemon X and, Z, yeah. instead of did we we never got, did we get, no, Auras because Auras was the main got series Auras, game we got yeah. Auras instead of like a sequel to that I which was good sense. as compensation for not getting the Z but I mean the whole Zygod story's never been explained. It's still like kind of like there's loads of questions about like Zygod and that whole storyline. So it's, like it does feel like that could be something that would have been really well taken by the fans, I think. And yeah, you're right. It's like where's that third game? Because as much as people say, ah, they're just money spinning it, the third edition was always like the final products, right? It was like the finished, the finished polish. It's like they, they had an extra year to tweak it and also add yeah. uh, some cool stuff into it. So add cool things into it, yeah, and make it really like it was just the best addition to buy out of that generation, right? Like oh, you said, Emerald is your favorite for the yeah. one thing that they gave you that you don't what get in. Yeah, I mean, what would the fruit be in Scarlet and Violet if they did Scarlet? Violet. I mean, they're not going to do it because we've got the DLC, so that kind of possibility is is probably gone. No, now. I think the DLC is a good step, as yeah, a, as, as, a, well. as opposed to the the, the second games like Scarlet mm. and Violet Two. I think there's better, but if I still do think that the third game is still cool concept. Yeah, uh, maybe they can do a combination of back. both. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like I hope with like this is my whole hope on black and white remakes. They don't do a faithful remix, so it's not just black and white. They don't do black and white two. They do black and white three. That's what I really want. A, a continuation of that story. That's what I would love to see with the remix. Or I, I remember just I remember in. playing black and white actually. This is the one thing I vividly remember. Mm. And just finding Kyurum just chilling in a cave somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I don't remember like how I found it or the reason it was there, I just remember like just there chilling, just just the regular boring Kyrum form. Just but oh, there's a Kyrum here, mm. and the genies as well encountering those. That was cool. I was only one genie per game, wasn't it? Because you could only I think what was it? White you got thunderous, and black you got tornadoes, or vice versa. I you had to take both to around. the rock to get landerous, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Like, I really like black and white. I think they're really, really... Loads of people love black games. and white. Yeah. They're, like, looked at... I think they're, like, Game Freak's, like, almost, like, reboot game, right? Rebooting the franchise. Because you look at the similarities between, like, how Red, Blue, and Yellow are made up and Black and White are made up. They're very similar. Like, the the uh, Unova Dex is just made up of Unova Pokemon. There's not any other Pokemon, like, to kind of bulk it out. There's like genuinely like 150 ish Pokemon in that Pokedex. You got the legendaries, like you got the the um the Swords of Justice, Trakian, Frisian, Cobblein, and then you've got like the genies as well. Uh then Reshiram Zekrom, of course. Uh you got Victini as well from those games. You got I'm not a really big fan of the starter Pokemon from Black and white. I think that's the one thing that I would say. The starter Pokemon from Black and White are not very good, but 
the rest of the polka decks is very strong. Like you've got things like Scrafty, Jellicent, Jellicent Chandelier, High Dragon. Oh, Chandelier and High Dragon are so cool. Uh, Electros. You know, there's loads of really cool polka one in that decks. And the format as well from just black and white was actually really fun. Really good. Conkledur as well. You got Renuliclis, uh, Kofarigus. There's loads of them. It's a really good decks. So it's a, I can see why people really like it. And the story through black and white and then into black and white too is very good. I definitely recommend, mate, if you're thinking about going and playing something, I'd go back and play black and white. Because I think you'll really enjoy it. Cool. Yeah. I think we've... Uh... We've, maxed we've out been, we've time been, have we? we've been rolling on for a long t- well not a long time but you know that was a, a good bit. chat to be fair when, when when we had this idea to talk about you know there's a lot we could dove into this deeper if people want specific topics yeah. about this but obviously we could chat about pokemon all day um <laughs> to, get into could call into, like specific games you know we've kind of glided over a lot of games and good points bad points we could delve into specific generations. Maybe we do a little side series uh, when we've not got as much news to talk about or we've got similar situations in the future where we just take a deep dive in, like, Generation 3. We take a deep dive into Generation 5 or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And have a look at the lore behind everything, the bad guy teams, mm-hmm. the characters, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And also in Hogwarts Soul Silver, Professor Oak is the professor, so that's the other reason why it's number one. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Because Professor Oak is the god. He's indeed the god. Did you know? Like, I know we need to wrap up, but did you know there's a glitch in Red, Blue, and Yellow where you can actually uh, battle Oak? Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It is pretty cool. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Is in Red, Blue, and Yellow, but yeah. So we'll leave it there. And um, yeah, well, I just say thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, please leave us a review. We do always We're up to uh, 19 now. I'm just checking 19 reviews. We, we do always beg at the end of the episodes, but we do appreciate. If you've made it this take. far on the episode, you owe us a review, basically. Yeah, this is very true. We <laughs> owe you a coffee, and probably much more. But um, yeah, you owe us a review. But like, I'm being serious for a minute. We do really appreciate you taking time out of your day to to just leave a review. It's so helpful for the podcast to help us grow, to get um, more ears on us from those platforms. And if you're on YouTube, there's been a bunch of things we've talked about this week, uh, even though we haven't really touched on much outside of the Pokemon world, like with what's going on news-wise. But do let us know if you've been getting that Paldea Evolved. We'd love to hear about any polls that you've been getting, what you think of the set as well. And also, if you'd like to get involved in the comments, do let us know what your top three games would be if you had to make the decision like we did today. And also, as a side bonus, you can drop in what your uh, favorite big bad bad guy team in all of the generations would be as well. That'd be good. But yeah. That's a massive thank you from me, and uh, I'm already looking forward to getting into next week's episode. So, Scott, over to you, mate, to sign out and say Sianala. No. Yeah. Good I, old listeners. Just to reiterate everything they just said, thank you, everyone. Obviously, we love doing this. We say this every week, but obviously, we want to keep doing it. And the podcast is not going anywhere so far. This is episode 12 now, which is crazy, really. And, you know, I just want to keep going. As long as we can keep hitting our... T- it, as long as we do it every week, man, this podcast is going to go places. I know it. So thank you, everyone, for listening. And um, tune in next week, where hopefully we may have some more interesting news to talk about. Right. I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. Bye. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.